would say, Jesus told me, and, and just, you know, you're sharing, you say, Jesus told me, so Jesus told me that. Uh, did you hear a voice? Did you, was it just a strong prompting? Because it, it almost seems like he's giving you words, like complete sentences. Can you share that, what's going on there? Yeah, it's pretty much, it's like Helen Shuckman in the sense that it's not, it's not like an audible voice, but it's a very clearly discernible stream of thoughts with no interference. So it's not like it's it's a stream that's in competition with another stream or with when people joke like, oh yeah, the committee meets and you know the, what the committee wants to do and all the different things. It's just that the mind can get very very still and then that stream of thought comes in. So and when I say Jesus told me it was in the early years. Of course, that's that's exactly how being raised Christian and, and going through a kind of a letting go of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, opening up to many different spiritualities, and and becoming very open-minded. I think and not seeing myself particularly as a Christian, even to just uh, becoming very clear and tuned in. Then at first it was. It was a dialogue, I could say, back and forth between David and Jesus. So it was very casual, friendly, lots of questions, a uh, lot of instructions. It wasn't, it wasn't like Jesus was in there going, "Love ye one another," or something that you might, you know, attribute to Jesus. It was, you know, it was, you forgot your keys and turn left here. I said left, and you know, and real kind of specific, practical things. And you knew it was his voice, not. Yeah, I mean that. Jesus had always been my teacher. I mean, even though I, I wasn't, I wouldn't talk about that much. You know, I would definitely wouldn't say that back in Sunday school uh, to the Sunday school teacher, even though we were being taught that Jesus was like an elder brother, a teacher, a way shower you know, our salvation and so on and so forth. And then um, coming to the Course, it was like clearly I just joined and identified with the voice that was speaking through the Course, through the words of the Course. And, you know, and this Course comes through Him because it is a Course in Love, and I could really resonate with that, like I could really feel it. It wasn't like something that, to speculate on. Or when, years later, when a, when a student would say to me, you know, what if the Course is like the biggest hoax ever? The biggest joke, you know, that, that Jesus Christ would come back and speak and, and give all these instructions and everything, and I just had a look on my face like, she said, you've never really, seriously, David, you've honestly never had one hoax thought go through your mind, and I said, no. You know, it just was such a recognition from the moment that I opened the book with this deep feeling and this deep recognition. So, it's not like I heard the voice of Jesus at the beginning. I mean, I got promptings and feelings and strong intuitions, but it took about two and a half years of reading the Course for eight hours a day uh, before this stream became very clear and casual. So, I could actually say that I was hearing the voice. I'm not saying I was picking up a word or two, or the feeling, getting a feeling to kind of move in a direction, or a slight prompting. It was actually a stream. And then for someone who was who was so shy, as a self-concept, voted most quiet, you know, in my senior class, and extremely shy. I think the embarrassment factor of of speaking in public and letting that voice speak through was huge. Uh, to family members, to friends, or certainly to what I considered people that I didn't know, strangers, you know, to go to course groups and then start to allow that. It was like a huge shift. So speaking to was, took like two and a half years, and then over the next few years, the speaking through, you know, or writing through, about being written through in emails and stuff, that, that all was a, another huge step on top of just that hearing the voice, it was allowing it to speak through. It was, uh, it was um, very frightening to the ego. Very, very frightening. That's why going to public groups and 
and relaxing and letting the voice start to speak through casually, um, it was a huge step for me. And, and saying that, now that's back in the uh, late 1980s, that second part. Uh, late 1980s and early 1990s. So even that, you know, now it just gets used more is in terms of a of a parable. Um, it's more of a merge now. It's more of an enlightenment merge. So it's not like identify with a David and a Jesus now. That's the funniest idea, of the idea of a David and a Jesus. Um, so it, there's the dialogue is gone. The what was so helpful for so many years, the back and forth. Uh, that comes out now more in terms of parables. Just like with Gary Renard's book, you know, it was, what the helpful value of that was, was uh, eight years of someone who was pretty much identified as being a jerk, <laughs> having a dialogue with Ascended Masters. People love that. People need that. It helps them feel like, I can talk to Jesus. Mm. If the jerk can get away with it, uh, I should be able to get away with it too. Or, you know, the Revolver movie that we show, you know, we say that's an enlightenment movie for gangsters. And when people watch it, they start to see Javi, you know, working with with Mr. Green, you know, they start to think, wow, if, uh, if the Holy Spirit can work with, with the gangsters for enlightenment, I guess I'm okay then. I, I don't feel so bad. I mean, maybe I can fit in there as well. So those are the values of the movie like like Revolver or of Disappearance of the Universe. And I think for me it just was that I saw, also felt that I was to be very transparent. So many, many sessions were recorded going back into the 1990s of these just open gatherings like we're having here now. And a lot of them, uh, yeah, Carrie knows about the, the restoring. Uh, it took a lot to restore those, uh, those those tapes, there were cassette tapes in the early years to, to put them on the, on the web. So it's just been, it's felt very natural all along, um, but it's been more like a stream of thoughts that was very clear and discernible, and, and therefore it was very helpful in terms of communication. <laughs>